hello and welcome to the channel and uh, today we are out here in the lovely chennai in the backyard of uh, rapti uh, hv ceo and co-founder dinesh arjun so thanks for having me hi appreciate uh, it. welcome to the channel and uh, thanks for having us here we've just been riding the rapti hv's uh, t30 motorcycle uh, the electric motorcycle out here in chennai and uh, yeah a couple of questions first of all starting off with uh, for those for our viewers who are unaware of your brand rapti hv how would you describe it in brief in a nutshell and how long has it actually taken for you to come out with your first production motorcycle absolutely no uh, so for us at rapti we truly believe that an electric motorcycle can deliver a extremely superior experience for motorcyclists and we want to make everyone aware of that we believe uh, if i can if, uh, if somebody takes a ride on a rapti motorcycle people start believing that electric motorcycles are here and that's what we're trying to solve uh, we we've spent over 7 years to kind of get the correct power chain the correct configuration to make a, a true electric motorcycle possible when i what i mean by that is uh, everything including performance reliability comfort practicality of use needs to feel like an upgrade today we don't believe that the products out there do justice to what electrification can bring and that's what we have to change possible awesome. and uh, the t30 it's very special because of the main usp which is the ccs2 charging so uh, how did you come about that why hasn't anyone prior to you or before you come out with it before what is so special how have you managed it absolutely so, so uh, one of the ways that we are trying to achieve this the vision that i just mentioned is by bringing an entirely new architecture to electric vehicles uh, rather electric motorcycles right uh, what we've been used to in scooters is something that we've been adopting from global markets which do not have the exact use cases as india so electric scooters elsewhere are extremely used for hyper local commute but in india two wheelers are used for everyday commute occasional long rides and even in some cases are you expect performance out of them right? right for motorcycles the same architecture doesn't make a fit what we're doing is we're bringing the same architecture that made electric cars better than their petrol powered counterparts to two wheelers we're bringing something called high voltage technology into motorcycles as a result of high voltage one obviously you get access to ccs charging which means you from day one our customers can leverage almost close to 30000 public charges that have already been set uh, set up across india by private players and the government for electric cars but more importantly even on performance you have uh, 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 no constraints uh, no limitations no thermal throttling when you push the bike uh, on highways or at very high speeds so the goal is just like an ice motorcycle if you punch the vehicle the vehicle needs to be able to handle that power throughout the charge that it has and not just reach a par and then slowly you taper know off. taper off yeah. and that's what we're trying to bring with high voltage we believe that this will really convince people that motorcycle electric motorcycles are uh, truly here oh, awesome yeah. so uh, for our viewers just to get an idea of what exactly are the pros i mean does it affect your battery performance your uh, durability your your range your longevity uh, what are the pros and the cons of this new technology that you have brought Ab to india is the first one in india for an electric motorcycle is the first time that we are actually seeing it out here so absolutely so one we're talking about uh, consistent performance where like i just mentioned right. where uh, you don't have performance tapering off as you kind of keep rolling i mean uh, keep driving second uh, we the, the the vehicle requires a lot less maintenance because it's higher voltage it generates a lot less heat so it doesn't need complex cooling systems right. so you don't really need to change coolant have lesser uh, parts that fail right. third because uh, of high voltage the vehicle weight is also much lesser we're at 175 kilos today which means it's a lot more practical to use uh, it's a lot more easier to handle F fourth we also can charge fastest at home and at out of home charging stations like public charging so not only is your public charging uh, you know charging rate very fast but even at home we are forex the industry standard today right. last but not the least because of high voltage the entire powertrain and not just the battery pack the battery pack the motor the controller all of the powertrain components last much longer so we have we're bringing in close to ice reliability on electric motorcycles today 
Uh, and because we make a lot of these components in-house, we're also able to keep cost at bay where we're today trying to bring price parity with mid-size motorcycles with the P30. Right. Just to elaborate on the point that you just mentioned, you, all ha you guys make a lot of your components in-house. What, what are the problems that you faced coming up to this point? Absolutely. So, like I mentioned, we did not stumble upon high voltage on day one. Right. We, we started with the vision of understanding what is the true pain point for a customer and how we can solve it. We started with low voltage 48 volt powertrains like everybody else. Okay. And then we slowly upped the voltage uh, every almost every year. In 2021, we were at 120 volts. We were trying to solve the problem. It, we couldn't get it completely to the expectation that we wanted. Then we went all the way up to 240 in 2022. Where okay. uh, and the biggest challenge was that most of the powertrain components just did not exist. And when I mean did not exist, they didn't exist in India. They didn't exist overseas as well. You either had components that went into low voltage vehicles, which were primarily scooters, or you had high voltage components that went into cars. Now okay. we had to really cross pollinate the tech from cars and put it into two wheelers. Okay. And one of the bigger challenges was building a, a supply chain ecosystem for this. Because right. we're not building one or two motorcycles, we're putting this into production, which means we need suppliers who can really produce it at the quality that we want and have the ability to scale when we kind of produce and start selling these motorcycles. So right. the biggest challenge was not just designing and developing the components, but also building and co-creating the supply chain for the for the parts that go into the motorcycle. Right. Today, we make close to about 22 PCBs that go into each motorcycle in-house, which means we have absolute control over the components, the cost, and also the integration. We're not working with too many external players to kind of integrate the motorcycle. If there is any feature improvement, we're able to roll it out very quickly. We're able to test issues, bugs very quickly and roll it out as software updates. This capability is largely because we have control over the, the entire entire powertrain and the entire control system. Awesome. So as of now, as it stands with the current, uh, the first production model, uh, what are the components that are not made in-house? Sure. So uh, something that's, uh, all of the components that are uh, extremely, uh, you know, similar to what you find in ICE motorcycles, for example, brakes, right. um, uh, ABS, uh, your, your, your tires, these are the components which are not made in-house, but even those, We've ensured that we work exclusively with tire ones, where we get the best of the best components that go into performance motorcycles today. We work with Bosch for ABS, we work with Brembo for brakes, and we work with MRF for tires. Right. So we get, the, uh, we get the best of the suppliers to ensure that our customers get a premium experience all throughout. Not just in terms of powertrain, but also in vehicle dynamics and, uh, and the fundamentals like brakes and tires. Right. All right. Uh, so now let's talk a little about numbers. So where you stand right now in terms of production, where you see yourself in the foreseeable future, let's say in a year or yep. two down the line, uh, what are the numbers that you're looking at and how are you going to expand the brand that sure. PHV? Today we have one outlet in Chennai. We okay. start commercial sale uh, by end of November. And once we kick that off, we want to also set up a, an outlet in Bangalore. So by the end of this year, we will have uh, Two outlets, in, two outlets in Chennai and one outlet in Bangalore. By the end of 2026, we want to be in seven cities, all South Indian state capitals, and then slowly move into Pune and, and to the north. And then we want to enter into the uh, into north, in more cities in North India in 2027. Um, we want to go slow. We want to ensure that we give uh, our, our early adopters as much attention as we can. We want to ensure that they have no issues in adopting our motorcycle. We also want to ensure that they have an extremely seamless experience switching over from ICE to electric. Because we believe that most of the customers, and that's also true today with all the bookings, that most of the customers that are, who are interested in the motorcycle are not already EV users, I mean existing EV users, but people who are looking to shift into electric from right. ICE, right? Like motorcycle users who are shifting into electric. So that's where our focus is going to be for the next 12 to 18 months. Okay. Um, and then we want to slowly move forward. Today on production, uh, we have a current install capacity of 1,500 units a month. We already okay. have a facility that can scale up to about 9,000, but we're in the process of closing out a larger uh, uh, factory in the outskirts of Chennai, which will help us scale up much faster, bring in a lot more quality, uh, bring, in, uh, bring in as much automation as possible, so the end product to the customers is as nice as it can be. Awesome. All right, so for a new player to enter the EV space uh, and is expecting to woo the crowd in your favor, uh, now a lot of people are looking at brand value because uh, 
let's say they want the brand that they are investing in to actually exist somewhere down the line because see i'll be frank i come from maharashtra i've seen brands fail manufacturers really fizzle out and uh, i've seen some in bangalore as well uh, but yeah what kind of a surety are you giving our viewers or your prospective customers that you are going to stay around about your funding are you going to run out of money anytime soon are you going to be there in the next 5 years what is your plan and how how are you going to assure them no that? i appreciate that question and i think that's extremely important extremely important for the customer as well right. um, so like i mentioned we're not um, just vehicle integrators we build building the tech for 7 years so the last 7 years we've existed even without making revenue and now we're starting to make revenue right so okay. that gives you a lot of so we we're, we're not an overnight player we're not a fly by night player who just came in who wants to put vehicles we're serious in this and we want we want to we want to stay here for as long as we can but more importantly because we're building out something new today the market is still open there's still very very few players in the motorcycle space and the adoption is so negligible that i still consider ourselves as a first mover in this space right uh um, but um, what we really believe is going to make a change is high voltage and we believe that okay. every performance motorcycle in the market will adopt high voltage at some point in time right okay. the the way forward for electric motorcycles we believe is high voltage because it improves not just charging ability but also performance and reliability which are very key for motorcycles okay. right but for bringing high voltage into motorcycles in india we've been working with the government quite a bit we have we the only oem which has been invested in by the certifying authority of automobiles itself and today we have backing from the likes of tdb which made the first indigenous car the indica happen the first indigenous yeah. electric car the reva happen and even you know some breakthrough technologies like covaxin happen so we're not just private vc funded we're also backed extremely backed by the government uh, so that should give our customers also quite a bit of confidence also like you saw earlier uh, we also have a very big facility already set up and we are here to stay uh, we have a clear pathway for not just putting more products on the road but also getting profitable because of the same thing that i just mentioned we don't want to uh, you know we don't want to just push out bikes while we're not profitable we uh, because we own a lot of the components that we make in house we're becoming profitable very 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 soon so okay. we're here to stay i don't think this is something that our customers have to worry about but if it's any uh, you know i think uh, the government also backs us and they're pushing us to push EV uh, 30 at 30, which is 30 percent EV penetration okay. before 2020, 2030, and I think electric motorcycles will play a very, very crucial role in that. And we're very far away from that today, as a as a segment, as an industry segment. Okay, awesome. Anyway, uh, lovely chatting with you. Thank you so much. Thanks I for really your time.